fourth. Instead, they're now in last at seven and seven. And let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture. It is wild in that conference. 16 teams in the conference. 13 of them have records of 500 or better. So a lot of guys in the hunt right now. So to talk about this, let's bring in NFL analyst Charles Davis to navigate the rough waters here from the AFC. And let's start with the Raiders from last night's game. They moved to 7-7, seven and seven, but a tough road ahead for them. They got the Broncos, the Colts, and the Chargers. Charles, do you think they can end up sneaking in? I don't, I, and, and I hate to say that because, as you pointed out so eloquently, this is all jumbled up, and it's hard to tell who's who, who's better, the records, and you can always point this team beat that team, et cetera. But yesterday they were fortunate. Look, kicking the game-winning field goal, great drive to finish it. Anyone remember the drive before? The interception thrown by Derek Carr? If Cleveland gets one more first down, there's no field goal by Daniel Carlson. So I don't want to take away what the Raiders did, all the COVID guys out with Cleveland, but I have to take that into account. Denver, Indianapolis, Los Angeles Chargers, I don't like that finish for them, so I don't think they sneak in. Yeah, kind of crazy what Cleveland has been through the last couple seasons with COVID, of course, getting COVID in the playoffs uh, last year. Uh, Charles, let's move over to the Chiefs now. First seven games, people I think were counting them out at three and four. Uh, but they've figured it out. How did they go from three and four to start the year to in the driver's seat right now for a bye week? Mike, we were there when they went three and four. It was the, the, the game in Nashville against Tennessee, myself, I and Eagle, Evan Washburn, and our crew. And you're right. At that point, you're wondering, could they get off the deck? At that point, they look like a, they look like a fighter at that stage who had been in a lot of big-time fights, and could he go another round? Well, they found a way. They got all their guys back on defense. Steve Spagnuolo's defense, which seems like year after year, starts slowly. And then by the end of the year, they're putting the Cobra Clutch on teams. Hmm. That is happening again. Pass rush is intact. Linebackers are tackling people. Secondary is covering and making plays. They're putting it all, putting it all together on the defensive side. And all year long, what have they preached on offense? We have to be patient. Teams are playing us what we call top-down defense which means keep everything in front. The explosives aren't there as they usually are. We have to be patient, take them when they come. Well, they talked it, but they didn't really do it. They kept trying to force it. They're not doing that now. Go back and watch Patrick Mahomes' tape over the last few ball games, starting with Denver, where they get what they did, what they did uh, against the Raiders, and then, of course, what he did on the road against the Chargers. Now you're seeing all that come into play. To me, they're the best team in the AFC right now because the defense is matched up. And the offense has figured out patience is a virtue. And, of course, when Travis Kelsey's fully involved, look out. Yeah, look out, especially in overtime when he just gets free there. Chiefs winners of seven of the last uh, seven games. And they've got the Steelers, Bengals, and Broncos to round out the season. Okay, let's move over to the AFC North because this one's wide open. As we mentioned, the Browns last night could have gone could have been in first place. Instead, they're last in division. So now it's the Bengals and Ravens tied atop there. So who ends up coming out of the North? Oh, my God. You, you had to ask the difficult question, didn't you? Look, Cincinnati on the road now is 5-2 and two for the season. And when you look at what they have left, they've got two home games out of three. They might want to change that around and make it three road games the way that they're playing. It's that type of a weird year. Baltimore has lost their last three, yet they remain tied for first place. They go to Cincinnati this week. There's a major showdown. Remember, earlier this year, Cincinnati went to Baltimore and really whacked them. So Baltimore looking for revenge. Let's see if they can put it together. Pittsburgh is a team that I see that, that everyone has got to be a little bit fearful of. Schedule is not great for the Steelers. I mean, when you look at what they've got at Kansas City, Cleveland, at Baltimore, that doesn't set up for great success. There's something about that team. They just don't let things go. And that win last week against Tennessee was a great example of that. So I don't count them out at all. Cleveland is so beat up. So many things with COVID. They're always going to fight, but I think they have the toughest road. I think Cincinnati right now, if you're going to press me on it, I feel like Cincinnati's the team. Let's see if they can carry it through and get some of those home wins. Because remember, the last two home games against West Coast teams in December, they lost them in Cincinnati. That was San Francisco and the Los Angeles Chargers. I'm not sure we saw that coming. So it's going to be interesting, but I'm saying Cincinnati right now.
All right, I am going to press you on that in a minute, but I did want to mention Cincinnati has improved their playoff chances to winning the AFC North, moving from 40.9% to 48% thanks to Cleveland losing. All right, so let's move over now to the AFC South. Things are going to come down to the Titans and Colts, it looks like. Tennessee holding on to that top spot to the division. I mean, holding on for the moment. No Derrick Henry and Indy surging. Can we see Jonathan Taylor and the Colts catch the Titans? They have a great chance, Mike, and we would not have said that a month ago, would we? In fact, let's be honest about it. When Tennessee went to Indianapolis in their second meeting this year and won in overtime, did we not pretty much lock down the division for the Titans at that point? Having the tiebreaker, having swept them, the way things were going that year, we thought it was done deal and a lock. Injuries have been a major factor for the Tennessee Titans trying to navigate that. We had a game with them against New England where on Tuesday, we all got noticed that there were 13 player transactions for Tennessee that day. And they were trying to get ready for the Patriots that weekend. So they've got a lot to go through and deal with. And down the stretch, they've got a Thursday night or against San Francisco this week at home. Miami, which is no longer the game we thought it was earlier this year that they would win. Miami's on a major hot streak. And then at Houston, flip it off for Indianapolis, at Arizona, but they don't fear the Cardinals at all, the way that Indianapolis is playing. The Raiders at the Raiders, excuse me, the Raiders at home, and then at Jacksonville. I like Indianapolis' finish. I like the way Indianapolis is playing. Tennessee has got to be careful. They've got to find a way to win some of these games. But we all thought it was a lock, Mike. We absolutely did. But Indianapolis is a team I don't think anyone in the league wants to play right now. Everyone was laughing when Carson Wentz was out there with two sprained ankles. Charles, no one is laughing right now the way they're playing. Now, you did mention the Dolphins. They have completely flipped their season around, rattling off six straight wins. That division, once again, I don't know how this keeps happening, but they're chasing the Patriots. Do you think the Dolphin fans are getting their hopes up thanks to this win streak that's gotten them back to 7-7? Seven and seven? Can they beat the Saints, Titans, and Patriots down the stretch and sneak in? Boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? Because what we saw from the Saints this past week against Tampa Bay makes you think that, hey, they've gotten off the deck and the way Taysom Hill is playing, even with the bad finger throwing the football, running it, and the way the defense played against Tom Brady, that's brutal, okay? So, so when you look at that and put that in total and you're saying, okay, how do they find a way? I think it's very difficult to say. I still say the AFC East is a battle between Buffalo and New England, which we'll see this weekend. But when we take a look at Miami at New Orleans, which is a Monday night game, at Tennessee, and you know the Titans are going to have to have that one as well. New England to finish all depends on where we are. But I think that the Dolphins have had a great run. I just don't see it happening, Mike. I, I still think it's Buffalo, New England in that division. Uh, at least they made it interesting. Or New England, Buffalo. I'm not saying which one right now. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Remember, remember we mentioned we were going to press you a little bit here. As hey, we remember, I've got that game this weekend, so there's no way you're getting that answer. No, well, all right, all right. Well, <laughs> let's let's just, you know, for kicks and giggles, find out who, who would you predict to make the playoffs, not necessarily give us the order, because after all, you could have New England in as a wild card or Buffalo in as a wild card. Yeah, you're right. All right, here, here are the teams that I've got right now. I've got the Bengals in there, right? I've got the Bills in there, the Chiefs in there, the Colts, Patriots, Steelers, and Titans. The one that I'm looking at closest is where I put the Steelers because that's the one that everyone would go, I think that's the biggest arched eyebrow. Like, why? Mm -hmm. Because of what they're finishing with. I'm relying more on who they are as an organization. Mike Tomlin's never had a losing season. It looks like it's Big Ben's last year. An upset down the stretch, looking at the Kansas City game for them this weekend would be a huge one. I'm putting them in there, but you know the team that has the best schedule down the stretch for me are the Los Angeles Chargers at Houston, Denver, at Las Vegas Raiders. I think that the Chargers have a great chance of being that seventh team, maybe opposed to Pittsburgh, but I've got the Steelers in right now. Much more on I'm an old guy, and I'm used to the Steelers being there. <laughs> All right, Charles, thank you. We did want to mention that list there was in alphabetical order, so before thank fans you. start freaking out, uh, that was... Like, what? What? <laughs> what? What is wrong with this guy? <laughs> yeah, don't don't worry. Don't freak out. You can send all your tweets and send them to Jenny or something, not, not, not Charles. Charles, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here uh, this weekend. Good luck uh, calling the game. Stay warm, my friend. Week 15, of course, wraps up later this week, and the focus shifts to the NFL on CBS. 
Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.